pound. Hey, Kayla. Hey, Michelle. How are you? I'm really good. I'm, uh, I'm having a little coffee out of my favorite mug that has a wing on it, so that makes me happy. Great. Yeah. And coffee just makes me happy. I'm just not going to lie about that. <laughs> so I've had coffee out of my favorite mug. Mm -hmm. And you've probably had your orange juice. So are mm -hmm. you ready to grow with God? I'm so ready. Let's do some growing. I think that's a very good idea. So we have a gospel today. And I think it's, I think it's my turn to read it. My turn to read it. Go for it. Very excited. Yeah. So this is from Matthew's gospel, and it's in the 14th chapter. Mm -hmm. And this is the gospel for the week. When Jesus heard what happened to John, Jesus left in a boat. And he went to a lonely place by himself. But when the crowds heard about it, they followed him on foot from the towns. So when Jesus arrived, he saw a large crowd. He felt compassion for them and healed those who were sick. Late that afternoon, his followers came to Jesus and said, no one lives in this place and it's already late. Send those people away so they can go to towns and buy food for themselves. Jesus answered, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. Jesus' followers answered, but we only have five loaves of fish, no, five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus said, bring me the bread and the fish. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves of bread and the two fish. And then he looked to heaven and thanked God for the food. And Jesus divided the loaves of bread, and he gave them to his followers and they gave the bread to the people. All the people ate and were satisfied. After they finished eating, the followers filled up 12 baskets with pieces of food that weren't eaten. There were about 5,000 men there who ate, as well as women and children. And that's our gospel. All right. Yeah. So, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, wait. Uh, I always forget the gospel sign. So we have, <laughs> we have now read the gospel. <laughs> and I have things that I need to say. What does that mean? What does it mean? What does that mean? <laughs> so I have a question for you because there's a word in there that I or what it means so maybe you can help me yeah it's kind of a big word mm -hmm. and sometimes I mispronounce it but I believe it says Jesus had compassion mm. what's compassion compassion is a good word so compassion um, has a little bit of a complicated definition Okay. So compassion is when you care about others, when you treat them with kindness and desire to help them. Mm -hmm. So if someone who you see is feeling bad, you feel that with them mm -hmm. and you want to help them. So it's both together. It's not just that you feel with them, but also that you care about them and you want to help them through that. So it's almost like three things. Yeah. Huh. Maybe that's why there's three syllables. Right, it's a big word for a big definition. Word, yeah, well that's good because it would be terrible if it was like a little tiny word and it meant like <laughs> 18 things, right? Right. <laughs> That'd be really hard. So I had a question for you too, Michelle. Okay. Um, so our gospel is often called the feeding of the 5,000. Mm -hmm. But at the end, it says there were 5,000 men who ate along with women and children. Yeah. What does that mean? What, what does that mean? Well, in that time, and sometimes now even, um, people count men. And they're like, 
And you, you know, it's, it's kind of built in like mankind. Well, it's humankind, it's all of us, mm -hmm. right? So in the ancient Near East, if they were gonna count the important people, the people who mattered, it was all the men. So they've always called this the feeding of the 5,000 because there were 5,000 men there. But, you know, just let's just say there were 5,000 men and they all had, there was equal amount of women and there was two or three children each. I mean, it would be the feeding of the 20,000 or the feeding of the 25,000, which would be so much cooler, a miracle. Wow. You know, but it's, it's just, it's sort of, uh, um, it's a way of looking at the world that makes, I think, the world smaller. Like if we were growing with God and we only were, it was growing with God with Caleb and Michelle was here too, that would be just different. And then I might feel a yeah. little like, well, don't I count too? So if I was at the feeding of the 5,000, I wouldn't be very important, but you'd be really important. And that would be cool for you, but it might make me feel kind of sad. So I like to say it was the feeding of the 20,000. And that's how I like to talk about it. Does that I like sense? that a lot. Yeah. So when we talk now, um, sometimes we need to be really, really um, keep, um, keep our eyes open to when things get said that aren't right. And I think that's what Jesus would want us to do, even if back in the, that time, they didn't do that. I think we get to do that now. And that's part of being a follower of Jesus, too. Absolutely. I like that a lot. Everyone gets to be important. Yeah, and, and that's how it should be. I mean, when you go to anywhere and you don't feel very important, you just kind of go, I'm just going to go home. Yeah. You know, have you ever felt that? I have sometimes. It's not a good feeling. No, and it's, it's, it's hard to ask. Like, excuse me, I don't feel important. Like, it's better when someone goes, oh, hey, we forgot. And come, Caleb, come here. You know, mm -hmm. very important. You know, so it's, it's, it's a good thing to remember. And that's what we should do as, as people who love each other and friends. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know what? I have questions. Questions. I have questions. I have so many questions. So <laughs> many questions. But we probably only have time for two to seven. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have a question for me or should I ask you a question? Um, I do have a question for you. Okay. At the very beginning of our gospel, mm -hmm. um, right before we talk about Jesus, we talk about someone named John and something happened to him. Mm. Who was John and what happened? Questions. They're so good. That's two questions alone, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, well, so if you read the story of Jesus, you know that he has a cousin, and his cousin's name is John. And John is really important to Jesus because um, John's mother and Jesus' mother found out they were pregnant right around the same time, right? So they've always grown up together. One's a little older. I think John's a little older than Jesus. Um, and I don't know if, if, do you have cousins? I do. I have a lot of cousins. <laughs> you have a lot of cousins? And is there a cousin that's really important to you because they kind of think the same, they've read the same books you've read and they want to sort of do the same thing that you're doing? Mm hmm Right? So that's who John is to Jesus. So um, Jesus is going around and teaching people about God and hanging out with his friends and healing people and loving people. And his cousin, John, well, he's going around and he's teaching people about, about God and he's baptizing people. He's not really good at being really, really friendly. He's kind of, he's kind of, he's kind of rough, <laughs> um, but he's doing the same work as Jesus. And he makes somebody really, really mad, a yeah. guy named Herod and John's killed. And so when we hear, um, when Jesus heard about John, he heard that somebody who does the same work as he does, a cousin that's known him all his life has died because John's followers come to Jesus and tell him. So in the, in the piece of the gospel we hear today, um, Jesus hears that he's, Jesus is doing what Jesus does. He's hanging out with people and he's teaching and he's healing and he's being, he's being compassionate. Um, but then he hears this person who's really important to him has died has been killed even. And, uh, and 
that's what sort of starts this part of the story is that Jesus hears that news. So that's what happened to John. To John. Mm. So, well, I have a question too. I have a question too. Here's my question. Um, almost right after that, right after Jesus hears that what's happened to John, um, they say he leaves. Where do you think he go? He went. Oh, that's a great question. Um, so our gospel says that Jesus went to a lonely place. Um, some other translations say a deserted place, um, but this one says a lonely place. Um, and I think um, Jesus might have um, physically walked somewhere. Um, that's very possible. Um, but also I think um, you can feel lonely in any place where you are. Um, sometimes it's a physical place that you go and sometimes it's the emotional place that you feel. Um, and I think especially after something really sad, like, um, someone dying who you're close to, um, it can be really easy to be in a lonely place. Um, but what I really like about this story, um, is that a couple things happen. Um, first, um, the congregation of people, um, still comes to Jesus. Mm. Um, and I like to think um, that maybe some of them were there um, because they knew that he was in a lonely emotional place mm. um, and they were there to bring him some comfort um, mm. and God allowed them to, to be there and be that for him. Um, and also at the same time, God gives Jesus an opportunity um, to have compassion and to do work with the people who were there. I, I like to think that it was a, a God moment where um, some good things happened for Jesus and some good things happened for, um, for the people who were there as well. That even in the lonely place, um, God brought some joy. Yeah. So what I like the way you answered that question, it made me think is that um, sometimes you can be in a lonely place and be really surrounded by lots and lots and lots of people. Um, mm -hmm. but it sounds kind of like God's there too, even if you can't feel it right in that moment. Absolutely. Hmm. I like that. I like that. And next time I feel lonely, do you ever feel lonely? I do. I yeah. do. Um, I think everybody feels lonely sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm glad God is always there. Um, even when I'm, I'm feeling lonely, yeah. um, it helps me to feel a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's a really good story. This is a really good story. Right? Lots of stuff happening. So, um, you ready? Do you think we should pray now? I think we should pray now. That's good because I have a sign and we shouldn't waste time. <laughs> Let's pray. Let us Do you pray. mind if I pray this week, Michelle? I'm sorry? Do you mind if I pray this week? Oh, that would be awesome. I'd love it if you pray. All right. Let's pray. All right. Thank you, God, for being with us today. Um, we thank you for all of the men and the women and the children who were with Jesus, the 20,000 or the 25,000 um, who were there and who were fed. We thank you that you are with us, even in a lonely place, and especially in a lonely place. We ask that um, we will feel you with us um, and continue to do the work that you have for us to do. In your name we pray. Amen. Oh, man. Wow. This is really is, it felt really, really quick, but I learned a lot. Yeah, I grew. I think I grew too, man. Someday we're just going to have to get bigger computers because we'll have grown so big. <laughs> Kayla, it was really nice to spend some time with you. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. And I'll see you next week. You will see me next week. All right. See you later. Bye.